Well, hello everyone. So today is our first story of our brand new domain, the amazing human body. So I want you to think of the word healthy. What does it mean? Not infected with disease? Feeling good? Your body is made up of lots of different body systems or parts. Your skeletal system, your muscular system, your circulatory system that helps the blood through your veins, the nervous system that communicates with the brain, and your digestive system, which helps keep nutrients in your body and gets rid of waste, and your excretory system, which gets rid of the waste. So today, we're going to hear a story all about the amazing human body. My name is Nick Nutri, and I am a nutritionist. Does anyone know what that means? Nutritionists study nutrition, or in other words, the way in which our bodies get the food they need to grow and stay healthy. Nutritionists learn what is in our food and how our bodies use it. I work with doctors to help children understand what they need to do to take care of their bodies. One of the first things a nutritionist studies is the human body. It's important to understand how the body works in order to know what it needs and to do its job well. So Dr. Wellbody tells me that you already know a lot about the human body. So let's take a look at the body parts that we can see. Where's your skin? It's all over you, isn't it? Skin covers your head, your face, your neck, your chest, your tummy, your bottom, your arms, your legs, your hands, your feet, everything. Your skin is a stretchy, waterproof covering that protects you from germs and helps control your body temperature. Just beneath your skin are tiny little receptors, part of your nervous system, that travel to your brain. You can't see them, but they tell your brain what is touching your skin and your brain reacts to the touch. Some touches, like petting a dog, can be very positive, while others, like touching a hot stove, can be quite painful. Touch is one of your five senses. Can you name the other four senses that help you get information about your surroundings? Oh my goodness. Smell, taste, sight, hearing. Oh, Dr. Wellbody was right. You do know a lot. Touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing are your five senses. Let's sit down and find out what you already know about your body. Where is your sense of taste located? Right, in your mouth. Your tongue is covered with taste buds that allow you to taste the differences between sweet, salty, bitter, and sour foods. They also warn you of danger from hot foods or other things that may harm your body. Did you know that your sense of smell is connected to your sense of taste? That's why some things you don't, don't taste the same to you when you have a cold. What part of your body is affected the most when you have the sniffles? Yes, it's your nose. And look how close your nose is to your mouth. So it makes sense that they're connected, doesn't it? Well, just above your nose are your eyes. Which of your senses do they control? Sight, of course. Your eyes are responsible for what you see. Vision lets you know the size and shape of an object, how near or far it is, and how fast it is moving. That's a lot of information. Some people have problems seeing correctly, but fortunately, they are able to have many of their problems corrected by wearing glasses or contact lenses. Okay, we've named four of the five senses, touch, taste, smell, and sight. The last one is hearing. What do you use to hear? Your ears, of course. Your ears catch and change sound waves into nerve signals that travel to your brain. Your ears not only help you hear, but they also help to keep your balance. Some people are born deaf, and some others develop deafness later in life. Hearing aids often help them to hear even better. Look around you. You all have skin. You all have eyes and noses and mouths and ears. But do you all look the same? Certainly not. You may look different on the outside, different colors of skin and hair and eyes, different heights, different weights, but what lies underneath your skin is all pretty much the same. You have already learned that your body is a collection of many different systems, or sets of connected parts that work together, each with its own job to do. Does anyone remember the names of the body systems? What is your skin wrapped around? What gives your body its shape? Your skeleton. Your skeleton 
is part of the skeletal system, including your bones and your joints. It supports your body and protects your body's internal or inside organs. Can you find your ribs? Your tough rib bones cover your soft heart and lungs. Together with your muscular system, your skeletal system helps your body move. The respiratory system is in charge of how your body breathes air into your lungs to supply your body with oxygen. The circulatory system pumps the blood from the heart and carries it to all parts of your body. The nervous system is the body's main control center, carrying messages to and from the brain. Do any of these systems sound familiar to you? Although the body systems are all important, the two that interest me the most are the digestive system and the excretory system. That's because they're the ones most responsible for the food that enters your body and leaves your body. You get nutrients from the food you eat, and I want to make sure that your body gets the nutrients it needs. The digestive system carries food into your stomach and your small intestines, where it breaks down the food into fuel that your body can use to give the energy that it needs to live. Food that your body can't digest goes into the large intestine and is released as solid waste. The excretory system moves liquid waste from the body. We're going to talk about these two systems a lot more on another day. People often compare the human body to a machine with lots of movable parts all working together. Most of the time, your body systems work well together, but just like machines, sometimes things break down. Germs can get inside your body and cause illnesses. The body fights off the germs within the body, but sometimes the body's defenses are just not enough. As a baby, you may have received vaccinations or shots to help prevent diseases that were once common among children. Vaccines or the medicine in a vaccination are inactive, or weaken germs, and they're harmless to people. They're often injected into your body. These dead or weak germs trick the body into thinking that it's become infected or getting sick. So the body figures out how to fight off that infection. The body then knows how to fight off any infections of that kind in the future. If you were vaccinated against diseases like measles or mumps, you'll likely never get those diseases. The human body is truly is an amazing machine. You carry your body with you wherever you go. Whether you're reading, eating, playing ball, sleeping, your body continues to work to keep you healthy. It's important for you to do your part too. What are some of the things you can do to take care of your body? Well, germs are everywhere. How can you help your body fight off germs? Washing your hands with soap and water is one of the most important things that you can do. Make sure that you wash often, throughout every day, and especially before you eat. Clean the rest of your body with regular baths and shampoos too. Cleanliness is very important to your body's health. How often have you heard an adult say, eat your fruits and veggies? I told you that I'm a nutritionist. That means good nutrition is very important to me. Eating the right foods is important for good health. And that means eating lots of fruits and veggies. It's so important that your body gets the proper nutrients to keep this marvelous machine running smoothly. Exercise goes hand in hand with eating healthy eating. The food you eat supplies your body with the energy it needs to exercise its muscles. By walking, running, and playing ball, you help your body stay lean and fit. Getting enough rest and having regular checkups with healthcare professionals are both important as well. In the following lessons, we will talk about all of these things. Taking care of your body is more than just keeping your fingers crossed and hoping that you'll be healthy. By the time you finish these lessons, you will know a lot of ways you can help your body stay strong and healthy. Next time we're together, I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite heroes, a man named Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Anton von Leeuwenhoek is from a country called Holland, and he was Dutch, which is what you call someone from Holland which today is part of the country known as the Netherlands. Anton was named for where he lived in Holland. The name of his street was Lionsgate, and his house stood on the corner. Well, the word for lion in Dutch is lay, and the word for corner is hook. Thus his name, Anton, who lives in the corner of Lionsgate. Naming people in such a way was not uncommon when Anton was born, nearly 400 years ago. I can't tell you why he's my hero. 
I can't wait to tell you why he is my hero, but I'll save that for next time. So let's think about the story that we just read. In a few minutes, when you click out of the video, you'll have a chance to answer these questions with a little more time, but I want you to think about them for right now. Think about a nutritionist. Why does nutritionists need to study and understand the human body? Next question. Sometimes when you have a cold, you lose your appetite. What other scents working together with your sense of taste could also affect your appetite? What is the name of the system that removes liquid waste from your body? Think about the other body systems. What are they? Last question. Washing your hands is an important way to fight germs, but sometimes doctors inject weakened germs into your body on purpose. Why do they do this and what is it called? 